You're listening to MMA Odds Breaker. This week we have Tim Elliott coming to our program, getting ready to fight UFC Fight Night, February 14th in Boomsville, Colorado, up there by Denver. Fighting uh, Zach Makowski. Did I say that name right? Yes, sir. Zach Makowski. Okay. All right. So I uh, talked to uh, James Krause just a little bit ago, and he said he's going to be up in uh, up in Denver after a little bit to meet up, uh, to do go through a two-week training camp with you as, as you're getting ready for your fight on the – um, on the 14th, his fight's on the 28th. So, yes, sir. Is that common for you two both to leave Missouri at the same time and end up in Denver to train together? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we pretty much planned on it. His fight kind of came a little bit after mine, but uh, he needed to get out of Kansas City a little bit and get some fresh guys on him and uh, get a little bit of altitude training. It'll be good for both of us. So, uh, we're going to go out to Factory X and, and work out up there with uh, Joe Warren and those guys. Yeah, and, uh, and Mark Montoya, the uh, the head coach and, and boxing or head kickboxing instructor up there as well. Um, is this how long do you like to spend up there in Denver? Could you would you like to spend more time? Because it seems like you're only gonna be spending about you know a week and a half or two weeks before your fight. Yeah, it's almost three weeks. I'm gonna be up there. Um, I, yeah, I would like to turn up there for several months, but. I haven't had a fight in a long time, and I can't couldn't really afford it. I'm I'm taking a couple of teammates with me, and I'm, I'm trying to fund their way as well, so it doesn't cost them a bunch of money. Um, but no, I think uh, three weeks is. I don't know if that's enough time to get acclimated, but I know it'll help my mental game a lot. So that's all I'm really trying to do. Are you flying up or driving up for this one? Oh, uh, we're gonna fly. So yeah, it is get quite expensive. You got about three tickets, and then. What's housing like for you guys once you get up there? Are you staying, you know, on campus? Or are you going to stay in a hotel? Like, how's it going to work out? Uh, we got a, uh, a long, uh, extended stay room. It's like two hundred fifty dollars for a week, and we'll have four of us in there. So uh, we'll be there two weeks before we go, and then uh, we'll be in Denver to stay on the USC's dime. But so it'll cost about five hundred dollars for two weeks between the four of us. But I'm going to cover the room so my uh, teammates don't have to waste a bunch of money. And uh, it's it's fairly nice. I mean, Denver's a nice area, so we'll be getting our money's worth for sure. Yeah, it's just, you know, unfortunately, Denver is in the mountains. It is a little bit cold, but there's not that much wet. It doesn't snow that much, so you won't be locked in or blocked in too too bad any place. Like, you won't get snowed in and not be able to get to practice. But how far away are you guys going to be from practice, and how are you going to get around? Are you going to have – do you have a car, or is someone picking you up every time? Yeah, I think we're going to rent a car, but uh, we're actually staying close enough to the gym where we can run back and forth to practice, so uh, hopefully that won't be an issue, but eventually we're going to have to rent a car for sure. Yeah, just to get food and all that. Now, how's the diet going to be? You're living in a extended stay, so it's going to be a small stove, but still, you're going to be on the road. Who's going to do most of the cooking? Uh, that'll be me, probably. I, I do most of the cooking here at home, so <laughs> I like to cook, and it'll be cheaper than eating out, and uh, I plan on starting all the groceries uh, again so that we're not having to eat out every meal. And, uh, uh, James is dieting pretty hard. He's a huge 55er, so he really has to watch what he eats. And uh, I can kind of stay on him and, and, and myself at the same time. Well, let's talk about Zach. Enough about your living arrangements. I don't want to get into who, you know, how many beds are going to be in the room and who's sleeping with who. That gets a little creepy. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about Zach a little bit. Um, how do you see this fight breaking down? And, and what do you think he's – more specifically – what do you think he's working on to try to beat you? Because you know he's looking at your tape, he's looking at your film. So what do you think, if you could get inside of his head, what's he trying to do to beat you? I mean, if he watches any tape at all, he'll see that uh, John Dodson and the uh, Ali Bagu Latinov, they were both successful when they were backing up and fighting me. So uh, I, I don't know. I would, If I was fighting me, I would try to back me up. But that's just my style. So uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I know he has quality wrestling but i feel like he's pretty basic he's uh he's pretty ab i don't think he's uh phenomenal anywhere he's he's solid all around but i think he's he's pretty basic do you uh do you feel like if he spent if if there was a particular discipline he could spend more time on you know either his grappling his wrestling or his boxing what do you think that he can make the most accelerate on like he could really get into it and and change his style if he spent more time looking at it I think that that'd be his problem training right there. He's he's trying to work on boxing and wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And uh, we're doing it a little different at our gym. We don't train boxing and wrestling and jiu-jitsu. We do just MMA all the time. Every practice is almost always MMA. We don't we do not do grappling without punches, and we don't do striking without takedowns. Now, you, you say that, and, and of course you have a wrestling background. Wrestle at the uh, uni, um, University of Central Oklahoma and, and at, um, was it Labatt Community College? Is that correct? 
Yeah, yeah, I won a national title for Lebec Community College. Yeah, so there, so you understand that you know wrestling is your base, and so you, no matter what happens, you walk into a crowd, you walk into a dark room, somebody smacks you in the back of the head. The first thing you do is you go to your stance. That that's where you where your base is always going to be, which is the middle ground. So well, for you, it's very easy to do an MMA practice because that's where you that's where you come from. My wrestling was a little different. I was never a really solid wrestler. I was just uh, really, really good cardio and really tough, and I, I just kept hammering and going forward. So um, my wrestling really struggled um, because I couldn't punch people. Now that I can punch people with my wrestling, it's it's more my style anyway. So uh, my wrestling really translates over uh, to MMA well. I never got in a really low stance. I always had kind of a up tall, upright stance and uh, really, it wasn't technically sound wrestling, but it, it transfers over to MMA really well. Well, we we saw how technically sound wrestling of of of, um, of Daniel Cormier didn't do very well against the non technically sound wrestling of John Jones in their fight. John ended up taking Daniel down, you know, four times or five times. So and fight. could have probably taken him down more times. Yeah, if he really wanted to, he could have because that that it's a completely different game. Like I don't I don't care. You know, I still talk pretty heavily to Kenny Monday and 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 I still obviously Johnny Hendricks and, and those guys because you know like myself wrestling at the University of Oklahoma we just Oklahoma boys just kind of keep talking to each other and and I don't think that that just because Kenny was a world champ and Olympic champ he would he would make the jump in MMA you know if even if he yeah. was young enough to do it and obviously he's too old to do it now because his wrestling is so solid it'd be tough for him to transfer styles where guys like myself and, and you and 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 Couture you know the jump. To MMA with the wrestling was a lot better because we were more grinders than we were technical wrestlers. Do you find yourself sometimes having to correct somebody when they come in and go, well, during this takedown, you should do this or you should do this because it's almost too much wrestling for MMA? Uh, uh, all the time. Uh, James Krause is a, is a big, uh, had a big problem with that. When I first got here, I could just take him down left and right. And he asked me why I was, a why I was able to take him down. And he was just sprawling so hard, I would shoot. And when he would sprawl, I would just cut the corner and take his back. So if you watch James fight now, he never sprawls. He, he bangs forward with his hips and he drapes over, which is what I was good at. Uh, I just wasn't athletic enough to hit a, a big, long sprawl. And, and now James, he's just a mess if you try to take him down. Uh, I, I won't even shoot on him anymore because he, he'll just he'll beat you up with his hips. Yeah, uh, well, not to mention yeah, I mean, so, it, he's so tall too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whatever works is correct. I mean, just yep. because it used to work doesn't mean it's going to work. And just because it's not working right now doesn't mean later it won't work. It, it's it's really pretty uh, pretty advanced, and the game is changing all the time. So you either change with it or you get left behind. Now, one last question before you let you out of here: How come Factory X? Like, why not American Top Team or, or going out to you know to J Jackson Winkle John or 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 coming out uh, to Team uh, Tour in Vegas? You know, where a bunch of other wrestlers are. How come you chose you know Factory X up in Denver? Uh, really, that was James's call. Um, the guy is, he's a great fighter, but in my opinion, he's a way better coach. Uh, he's, he's super smart. And I mean, I, I just do what the guy tells me. If he told me to, you know, go run out in the freeway, it's going to help you. I would probably listen to him. He, he's never steered me wrong at all before. So, uh, you know, I just keep my mouth shut and do what he tells me. And, uh, it, you know, it works. We, we had a little bit of trouble with our camp at one time when I fought Bobby Latinov. We tried to change some things. And it didn't work out for us, and you know it was, it wasn't just him. It was, it was me. But he, he's just, he's so smart, and he's, he's a genius when it comes to MMA. It's, it's almost crazy. The guy, he's, he's getting better every day. He keeps learning. He's, he's watching videos. He, he, he's, he's just at it twenty four seven. So I just do what he tells me, and it, you know it's working out for me. That's what got me to, to the UFC, and I think that's what's going to keep me there. That's Tim Elliott. Tim, thanks so much for coming on here with MMA Icebreaker. We really appreciate it. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon, bud. All right, thanks for having me.